Now, after knowing the situation of the time period of the Yamani and the chaos, the fitness that surround this, this time period of the Yamani and how the clerics will be the most evil clerics under the shade of the sky, the clerics of religion, be it Shias or Sunnis, the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking in absolute terms that clerics, fuqaha, of the end times at a specific date, which is the end times, that's where the Yamani is going to be living in, in the end times, age of appearance. During this time, the clerics of religion are the most evil creation under the shade of the sky. That they are the most evil, the e most evil clerics under the shade of the sky. From them the fitna emerged and to them it will return back. Now, since we have seen that the, the hadiths are speaking about a lot of negativity from the people, a lot of wrong things are arising from the people during the time period of the, of the, of the Yamani, and how the truth is, uh, is going to be concealed and, and hidden, and whoever speaks about it, is considered to be the friend of Satan and the head of misguidance according to what the Prophet Muhammad said. Now let's see about like, let's see what Ahlul Bayt peace be upon him said about the truth. When we go to Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them, we see them say the following, Amir al muminin starting with the Prince of the Believers peace be upon him, he says, فَلَا تَقُولُوا بِمَا لَا تَعْرِفُونَ فَإِنَّ أَكْثَرَ الْحَقُّ فِي مَا تَنْكُرُونَ This is in Nahj al balagha volume 1, page 154. He says, do not speak about that which you do not know. This is a command from the Imam. He's saying, do not speak about that which you do not know. For most of the truth is in from what you reject. So the Imam, peace be upon him, is giving us a method. A method to distinguish what is the truth. He says, look at what you reject the most. In your life like for example what is the most thing that you reject the most things that you reject can be the truth that that most of the truth is in what you reject most of the truth is in from what you reject so then Imam Ali peace be upon him says O oh people, لا تستوحشوا في طريق الهدى لقلة من يسلكه. That do not fear the path of guidance from the few people that walk on this path. So there is a fear. Amir al-Mu'minin knows this. He knows that people, they fear the truth. There is a certain like scary vibe, a scary vibe that surrounds the truth. This effect, which causes fear to the people, لا تستوحشوا في طريق الهدى. Do not fear the, the path of truth due to the few people that walk on it. You will see like few people walking on the truth. When you see few people walking on the truth and you see a lot of people walking on the other side, you feel more comfortable walking on the, on the path that has a lot of people because you're much, you're much more in your comfort zone. But in the path of truth, there are few people. So if you walk on the path that has few people, you, Amir al-Mu'mini says, do not fear it. Most of, the, most of the truth is in from what you reject. So go, because it's easy, it's easy to go to the, with the majority. It makes you feel better. But you're in this dunya for a test. You're in this dunya to be tested. So, Amir al muminin says, O oh people, do not fear the, the path of guidance due to the few people that walk on it. For the people, that the people have surrounded, that they came around a banquet that does not, like, that does not satisfy them. قليل shabaha that it, it won't satiate them. It won't make you feel like, like full or that, that you had enough. It won't make you uh, feel that you, that you ate enough of it. That the people themselves, they came around a banquet 
قليل شبعها. They won't be full after eating from the banquet. They're not full. They, they will not be satiated. They will not be satisfied. So Amir al-Mu'minin then says, كثير جوعها. That you will starve a lot around this banquet that the, most of the people uh, that came around it. You will starve. Wallahu al And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who supports. So then Amir al uh, Mu'mineen alayhi salam Actually Imam Sadiq Peace be upon him says In uh, in a hadith In the book of Al-Ghaybat al Page 305 The previous hadith about uh, Walking on the path Of guidance that do not fear The path of guidance Due to the few people that walk on it This hadith is in Ghaybat al Page 35 Imam Sadiq Peace be upon him says فَإِذَا حَدَّثْنَاكُمْ بِحَدِيثَ فَجَاءَ عَلَى مَا حَدَّثْنَاكُ بِهِ فَقُولُوا صَدَقَ اللَّهِ So Imam Sada, peace be upon him, says that if we speak or, or if we narrate a hadith and, and it came in an appropriate way عَلَى مَا, جاء, على ما حَدَّثْنَاكُمْ بِهِ In a correct manner, say uh, صدق الله Allah has said the, the truth but if we speak of a hadith, but it came like in, an, in opposing terms or opposite of what we actually reported to you, say, Allah has said the truth and you will be rewarded twice. This is in Ghaybat al Nurmani, page 305. Then there's another hadith in Al Kafi, volume 1, page. 535 by Imam Sada peace be upon him he says فَإِذَا قُلْنَا فِي الرَّجُلُ مِنَّا شَيْئًا وَكَانَ فِي وُلْدِ and if we speak of a man something and if we speak about a man something and it was in his son or son of his son do not reject it so the Imam here says that if we speak meaning like narrate a hadith about a man something something about this man that he uh, about his uh, location about where he lives about his descriptions or uh, like for example which imam he is which number of of an imam which rank he is the imam says that if we speak about something concerning like a man and it was in his son or son of his son do not deny it do not reject it so Imam Sadi the peace be upon is emphasizing on not rejecting like for example a hadith that uh, that speaks about a son of, of, of a son of a certain Imam for example if they speak about our personality at the end of times if they speak about this personality in the end of times and this personality has descriptions that is in his son or son of his son. Do not deny them. Do not deny them. So you can't reject anything. And then the Imam, peace be upon him, says, "In That if we speak about a matter, that it comes from here. And then it came from there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do what he wants. This is Imam Sada, peace be upon him, saying in the book, Bihal Anwar, volume 4, page 119, that if we speak about a matter, that it comes from here, then it came from there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he wants. And if me, and if we, wa in haddathnaka liyawm bi hadith, that if we speak about a matter in a hadith, and tomorrow we speak, uh, like we speak a hadith that is opposite to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can erase what he wants and he can confirm. So this tells you that there is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change. That there is a hadith that speaks about something. But then tomorrow or in years ahead, that event does not occur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do what he wants.
say that, for example, the Imam spoke about a person emerging from a certain area, but in the future, in actuality, in real life, he emerged from a different area, not in the mentioned in the Hadith, you don't reject the person. For example, if the Yamani, let's say, was said in the Hadiths that he comes from Yemen, and then in real life, like in the future ahead, he arrived, like let's say, in Iraq. You don't reject the Yamani that appeared in Iraq when the Hadith in actuality said that he emerges in Yemen. The reason why that the truth gets rejected is because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the human being, the test sometimes becomes harsh. And uh, the, the human being or the Muslim might not uh, remain firm on his religion and he might exit out of his religion due to the harshness of the test and due to his um, weakness in faith. It requires faith to remain firm on, on one's religion. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Ankabut verse 2 verses 2 to 3 he says أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do the people think that they will be left alone saying we believe and they are not tested? وَلَقَدْ فَتَّنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Verily we have tested those of those of before فَلْيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall know those who were truthful and shall know those who are liars. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test his creation. In the end of times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test the Muslims. Are they going to follow like the Yamani at the end of times? Or are they not going to follow him? Because the Yamani takes the, uh, takes the person to Imam al-Mahdi. Peace be upon him. The Imani takes the person to Imam al -Mahdi. And that we are going to be talking about in the future, inshallah, uh, later on. So, there is a hadith that says, إِذَا قَامَ الْقَائِمْ جَاءَ بِأَمُرْ الَّذِي غَيْرَ الَّذِي كان. That the Iqam, peace be upon him, and this is uh, narrated from Imam Sada, peace be upon him, that if the Qa'im rises, he will come with a matter that is different from that before. So it's new. This is in Ghaybat al Tusi, page 473, hadith 494. So when the Qa'am rises, he will come with something. He will come with a matter that is different from that of before. So those who are looking at what was before, okay, they're looking at what is before and they want to apply what was before to real life, the Imam says, he will come with something that is different from what is before. So you can't look back. Even if you want to look back, uh, it is not going to help you. It is just something new to you. So what is new to you is going to be like a test. A teacher, uh, if he wants to test the students, it would be unwise for the teacher to test them according to what like they know already. If they know something already, like it's one plus one, it's, it's not really going to be a test. It's, it's not really going to be a, uh, a good test for the, for the students. They don't have to prepare. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to prepare ourselves for that test. You need, you need to do some work in preparation. You need to do some research. You need to examine. You need to have good eyes, good eyeballing in terms of reading and knowing oh, the, the lessons of before and then take heed then you're ready to the, for the test. That's how it is. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test people. On. So, then, there is another hadith which says, إِذَا قَامَ الْقَائِمْ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ If the Qa'im rises, peace be upon him. دَعَ النَّاسُ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامُ جَدِيدًا that He called the people to Islam. Uh, like, جَدِيدًا دَعَ النَّاسُ إِلَى الْإِسْلَامُ جَدِيدًا That he called people to Islam once again. وَهَدَاهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَمُرْ قَدْ دُثِرْ Then he guided them to a matter that has been lost. فَظَلَّ عَنْهُ الْجُمْهُورِ and, and the people deviated from it. If something lost, people have deviated from that lost thing. That the, the Qa'an, peace be upon it, is guiding people to something that 
that the people have deviated from. And we're going to talk about the, the will of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Imam says, وَإِنَّمَا سُمِيَ الْقَائِمُ مَهْدِيًّا That the Qa'im, peace be upon him, is, is named to be Mahdi because he guides to a matter that people have been misguided from or have deviated from. وَسُمِيَ بِالْقَائِمُ And he is called Al-Qa'im لِقِيَامَهُ بِالْحَقِّ Because he rises with the truth. Because he rises with the truth. This is in Al-Irshad by Al-Mufid, Shaykh Al-Mufid, volume 2, page 383. And now, uh, there is another hadith from Malik Al-Jihni. He says, Qultu li Abi Ja'far, Imam Al-Baqir, peace be upon him. He says, Malik Al-Jihni says, I said to Abi Ja'far, Imam Al-Baqir, peace be upon him, Inna nasifu sahibu hadha al-amru bi sifati allati laysa biha ahad min al-nas. That we describe the rightful owner with a description that does not apply to anyone from amongst the people. That the description of the rightful owner does not apply to anyone from among the people. Then the Imam says, no, no by Allah. لا يكون ذلك أبدا حتى يكون هو الذي يحتج عليكم بذلك ويدعوكم إليه. The Imam says, he responds to Malik al-Jihni, no by Allah, it will not be that at all. Until he himself will argue with you about it. And, uh, and then he will call you towards him. Until he argues with you about it and calls you to himself. So the Imam, peace be upon him, responds to Malik al uh, Like he had something that he's confused about. As in that the descriptions of the rightful owner... They do not apply to anyone from amongst the people. The Imam says, no by Allah. It does, it, meaning that there is someone that this person will have the descriptions apply to him. So the Imam, peace be upon him, is, is saying he's, uh, he's rejecting that thought in which uh, that uh, Malik Jihni holds. What is that thought? The thought that the description does not fit with anyone. It does not apply to anybody. No, the Imam says, it, meaning it does apply. It will not be that, but it won't be that at all until he himself, meaning the person with that description, only that person with that description, he himself will be the one to argue with you about it and, and call you towards himself. So this is, look at how, look at the wisdom of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them in this. Look at how they are very wise. They are very wise. They are concealing something. They are, there is something hidden even in the description itself. There is something hidden, hidden in it. And the person himself, that when he appears, that rightful owner, when he appears, he's going to call people towards that description that he, that he holds, that he carries. This is in the book of Al Ghaybat al Nu'mani, page 337, chapter 22, hadith number thir- uh, 3. So, this is basically uh, the, uh, how, how the truth is going to be confronted in the end of times. And these are the hadiths that speak about, uh, from Ahl al Bayt, peace be upon him, that speak about uh, that most of the truth is in what you reject. That most of the things that you reject in your life can be the truth. So, and even the path that you take, do not fear the path that has few people. Because sometimes the path that has few people is the true path of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Do not fear the path. لا تستوحشوا طريق الهدى That do not fear the, the path of guidance the path of truth due to the, pu- the due to the few people that follow it so this is the wisdom of ahlul bayt peace be upon them